What is up, guys? It's Andy Frisella, and this is the show for the realists. Say goodbye to the lies, the fakeness, and delusions of modern society. And welcome to reality, guys. Today we have Andy and DJ Cruise the Internet. That's what we're going to do. That's what CTI stands for. It stands for Cruise the Internet. I'm still working on getting my voice back, guys. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I've been very sick. I caught the flu, uh, which derailed my 75 hard. Um, was able to keep my ruck streak going. Could still finish that out uh, for the year, but I had to start 75 hard over again. I, I planned on starting it yesterday, but I uh, still wasn't healthy enough to start it. So we're going to skip all the intro. I'm going to let my voice heal up as much as possible, and we're just going to get right into it. Uh, I am starting 75 hard over today, though, uh, which for those of you listening right now is yesterday. So you're which listening on Wednesday. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ah man! Yeah, fuck all, you that flu is no joke, one. bro. No, nah, bro. Listen, what, what, WF, bro. They're trying. Yeah, that they're was trying. a direct mail-in, uh, biological, mail-in biological attack from Klaus Schwab. <laughs> this is a bro. We had a uh, we had like a shit ton. Seventy percent. Is it really? Mm-hmm. How, how did you how do you find that out, Kara? Seventy percent of our office got it. Mm-hmm. Dude, you know how much worse that is than whenever COVID came through. Like when COVID came through, we had a few people get sick. Yeah, dude, there's a few here and there. Yeah, 70, and, and we had seventy percent of our office get sick with the flu, and like, it was bad. A week, yeah, yeah. So, and like we're talking about one of the healthiest places on earth. You know what I'm saying? Like people here are fit. I mean, I'm gonna tell you this, dude. Whatever that flu, the what, what do they tell you it was? A flu, a I, dude. It's serious, bro. Joe it, just held up white power. Huh? No, he didn't. That's a, that says you're correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what's up, I'm man? Watching you, motherfucker. I, I got you. Yeah. You yeah, watching yeah. out? You can't leave me out the party, bro. You're, bro. You're the one that knows all the codes. <laughs> what's going on, man? Oh, not much. You know something interesting I saw while we were cruising. Um, don't forget, don't be a hoe. Yeah, yeah. sure, show. Sure. Don't be hoes. Um, but something interesting I saw when I was cruising. And this is, I think this is just an important thing for people to realize, like, you know, how f***ed up these, like, everybody knows they're f***ed up, right? But, like, what they choose to go after and what they choose not to go after, okay? Um, This headline reads, and uh, when I saw this, I'm like, oh, you know, finally some people about to get in trouble or something, you know? Uh, Headline reads, Nancy Pelosi, AOC accused of abusing official government resources in watchdog complaint, right? So I'm like... Oh shit! Like what? They, they finally got him, you know. But then I, you dive into the article, and uh, it, 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 the, this is a Daily Wire uh, article. It reads: "The Foundation of Accountability and Civic Trust, or FACT, filed a complaint to the Office of Congressional Ethics against Representatives Cory Bush, Jamal Bowman, Sean Casting, Greg Kazar." Uh, Maxwell Frost, Ted Lieu, Alexandria Oscar Cortez, Elon Omar, and Richie Torres. Um, they are all accused of linking official government resources to their campaign accounts, a violation of federal law and House ethics rules uh, regulating the social media activity of Congress. So they made a f- social media post, and they're making this all a big deal. My issue is what about all the insider trading? That these do like how Nancy Pelosi just distro- d- d- disclosed that she made a seven figure bet on this NV, uh, in uh, NVIDIA, huh? Yeah, on um, a se- seven figure bet on NVIDIA, um, just over the, the Christmas holiday. All right, these are stealing our money and using using their power in Congress to steal money, but yeah, let, let's hit them on a social media post. I think that's a great idea. I think that's typical, you know, that's why that's, it's no different than, you know, them trying to pretend like they're going to, you know, prosecute Hunter Biden on a gun violation. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they, they know people want accountability. Um, so they give them accountability on something that's like a slap on the wrist. And then, you know, they act like that's all the big will. The know, other stuff like that, didn't happen. That, that meme of the iceberg, right? Where you, you see the tip that's above water and it's a mass like, bro, that's what the, like, bro. And like mm-hmm. nobody's gonna like do anything in Congress because they all do that. They yeah. all inside trade. Yeah, like all these, they yeah. go in worth nothing and come out worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah, just well, you know, I mean, that's what happens when you are allowed to 
take money from lobby interests uh, to make regulations and laws, and you know ahead of time what rulings are going to be happening, and you are able to invest along the lines of what those rulings are going to be. Oh. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, that's highly corrupt, and I believe it's illegal. Um, if we, you can't do that. No, if we I, did, I can't do that. Yeah, if you and I did that, we go to jail. But they're allowed to do it because they're, you know, elites and we're peasants. And this is reality of what we live in. And uh, this is the reason that most of these people want to get into Washington. You know, I think this is a big problem with our with our system in general is we don't have people that go to Washington, D.C. to serve us or or do anything for America or American people. You know, most of these people don't have real careers outside of politics. They've never made real money outside of politics. Um, so this is their golden goose. This is their career. And, you know, this is reflective also uh, with a lot of the influencers who are, uh, who have become relevant since 2020 because of all the social disruption going on in the world. You know, not that they're insider trading, but these people were not relevant before this. Um, and at first they cared. At first they got on to these topics of what's going on in the world because they care. But now they figured out that it's an avenue for them to make money. You know, the more views, the more clicks, the more shares they get, the more shit that they sell, the more money they make. And it's become a career. And a lot of these people, unfortunately, and even some of them that I really like or liked a lot as a person, they've become... Uh, very selfish driven individuals and have forgotten the purpose of what, why they started doing this in the first place. And it's, it's, it's very frustrating yeah. uh, because we're not going to be able to ever solve the problems of what's going on in this country with people like that serving um, in our government or bringing attention to what's going on in the world. You know, how many of these influencers out here just sensationalize and just try to, um, scream at the top of their lungs or try to put the most graphic image up or create the most comment engagement. You know, they do that because then they, and a lot of people don't understand this either. <clears throat> you know, they do that because their sponsors will then look at their engagement and look at their views and look at their shares and the personality will be able to demand more money from them uh, on those situations or they'll actually sell more of their own stuff. Mm -hmm. And the average person has a hard time identifying that because the average person is just kind of out here like wanting things to be better. And they're like, why is nothing getting better? Well, the reason that nothing's getting better guys is because a lot of people in our government, most people in our government, I mean, there's a few that are in there genuinely in my opinion, uh, but it's very, very few. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say like probably less than 20 out mm -hmm. of the five or 600 that are up there. Um, and to a certain degree, they have to play the game. Yeah. Yeah. It's, That's it's the unfortunate thing. We, we have a misalignment of intent when it comes to the people who are capable of actually changing things in this country. You know, there's very few people who don't eventually end up making it about themselves. And um, what's the saying uh, um, about power and corruption? Yeah, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. Yeah, and, and unfortunately that seems to be the case, especially for a lot of these people. This is why, like, people who are independently wealthy and already have things when they speak, I think it carries more weight because they're not necessarily trying to gain more wealth. They're trying to make a difference. Right. Um, that's one of the, that's one of the reasons I always believe in Trump, yeah. you know, but like as these things start to unravel more and more, you know, I, 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 I don't want to sound like an asshole, but like I'm just losing faith in, all of these people. Yeah. It just sucks, man, because, like, I think about, like, you know, our Constitution and what what this country was supposed to look like, right? Like, the whole point of Congress, right? Like, you go back to, to, to 1776. We won't go back too far. Um, but, <laughs> you know, you, you really think about it, right? Like, the, the, our Constitution, the way our Congress is set up, it was designed for, you know, the farmer who saw an issue in his little community, right? He'd go in and he'd be the voice of his little local farmer community, right? Yeah. And he'd go in, he'd make a voice. That's not the case no more. And then once he made, you know, when, once he went in and made his difference, he goes back to farming. Yeah. Right. And you take somebody like AOC, who was a 
a, a bartender, a waitress. Yeah. Right. In a little bitty diner. Right. And you take somebody like that. And I'm sure she see she felt like she had real issues and, and, and you know, gripes and stuff. But she goes in and she realized, oh, this is just a cash cow. Yeah. Right. And makes zero changes. In fact, makes makes like she votes on things to continue to make problems that she continue to, to, to try to promise that she'll fix. Right. She has no like you, you think she'll ever go back to being a, a, a waitress. No, it won't happen. Well, I mean, I don't think it's fair to say that she should. I mean, look, dude, I'm not an AOC fan, all right? Like, it's not fair to say that you should go back to being, I mean, the goal is to move up, right? The goal is to progress your career and everybody, that's okay. I, I understand that, but it shouldn't be through corruption and insider information that other people don't have access There's to. There's a way to do that. Uh, yeah. Or shuffling the interests of the people to the end of the line while you get wealthy off of, you know, things that are happening uh, that only you can benefit from. I mean, the idea of our government as a whole is that it's for the people of the people by the people. And that's, we're not for the people and we're not of the people. No. Um, that's the thing. They pick a few of them to make it appear like that. Correct. They pick the AOCs. They yeah. pick the Cory Bushes. They, yeah. put, they, they pick a few to make it appear yeah. as if that's the truth. But yeah. I mean, how many of those are there? You know Not many, I mean? man. Most of these people are most of these people are what you would call like blue blood people. They yeah. come from wealth. They come from long generational lines of money, and or the Ivy Leagues, right? And, and this is same club. yeah, and that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with it. We're dealing with a, an out of touch, um, uninterested, malintent group of people who do not serve. The rest of us, mm -hmm. and on in any fashion, and um, you know, if you if you have an entire government that's built off of service and ideals of service, that we are representative, we are supposed to be a representative government, and the people that you know go from let's say here in Missouri to Washington D.C., they are to speak for the people here in Missouri. That doesn't happen at all anymore. I mean, that's not like. Do you really believe? that Nancy Pelosi speaks for the people in her neighborhood where she comes from, go to her neighborhood in San Francisco and look at it. It's a shithole. I mean, if she speaks for those people, um, you know, I'm Santa Claus. Right. Like, it's right. it's absurd. It's an absurd statement at this point in time. These people don't even pretend to serve these people anymore. You know, uh, Cori Bush doesn't even pretend to serve the people from her neighborhood in St. Louis anymore. Like, when some sort of racial event happens i mean yeah she'll open her mouth and start screaming about it but that's just to secure the, the that's just to appear mm -hmm. you know most of the time she's not worried about what's going on here no you know what i mean none of these people are no and i think that's becoming very obvious to every single human who's observing what's going on you know people don't pay attention until they start feeling the pain themselves and there's enough pain being felt in our culture right now to where people are starting to pay attention you know people who I would say things to, in like, you know, people in my family, people in real life who I would say things to two or three years ago and they'd be like, bro, that sounds crazy. Mm -hmm. That sounds like the boogeyman. You're, you're insane, bro. Blah, blah, blah. Come on, man. It's not really. Now those people are like, dude, are you sure like what you're saying is right? Because it does seem like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I'm getting a lot of that from like, especially from people who are what I would describe idealists. Mm -hmm. These are people who believe in the good of other people. The bleeding heart. Yeah, they're good people. And and they might even vote Democrat, right? Like, I actually believe that a lot of people who vote have, have traditionally voted Democrat, they're actually just people with big hearts that are easily misled on the basis of doing, quote unquote, the right thing. Mm -hmm. They don't believe that people would manipulate or lie to them because they wouldn't manipulate or lie to people. Right? right. So and they believe that people should have equality and people should be not uh, bullied in, in, you know, in real life and the, all of these things, which, by the way, we all agree with, mm -hmm. except when the other side starts to become the bully, we're not just going to sit here and take it. Right. Right. And so what's happened here is very interesting because even the most progressive human beings, people who I know five, 10 years ago thought that I was insane for just having what I call realist viewpoints. Um, those people have now, this this culture of 
accept my way or I'm going to bully you or you're a bigot or you're a racist or you're a this or you're a that and I'm going to cancel you and I'm going to mob you and I'm going to post you and I'm going to dox you. This has been going on long enough to where every single person has had an experience with one of these people in reality, okay? So even the most progressive people that I know have had personal experiences with these people who are legitimately insane, okay? And so we're seeing it switch, but it just took such a long time because a lot of people thought, well, if I'm on their team, they're not going to bully me. But then the first time that they've come up now where they've disagreed or they say, hey, wait a minute. And then they got canceled by their own people. Now they're realizing, holy shit, this is a problem. And this creates a dangerous situation for this far left minority of people because these people for the last 10 to 15 years have been propped up by social media and media to believe that they have the numbers and they have the power, which they do not. All right. And they haven't ever had it, by the way. This is what the Twitter files were about when it showed that social media was using bot networks to prop up the opinions of those progressive lefts and suppress the opinions of everybody else. At the direction of our federal government. That's correct. Um, and so these people are now filled with a false sense of power and they don't have the numbers. And what's happening right now is something that I've described on the show many for many years is that everybody else, the 80 to 90% of common sense people are waking up that they have the numbers and these people are going to try to like go punch those people some more and they're going to get destroyed. Yeah. So like, and bro, unfortunately that needs to happen at some level, but um, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. Cause we're seeing it, right? Like these people are no longer in control of cancel culture and I think cancel all their comments off. I think post. cancel culture is ridiculous anyway. And like the the thing now we have is we have these people over here on the on the right in the in the far right who are ultra conservative people who now have power socially who are also abusing that power the opposite way now. So if you don't go to church every Sunday and you don't say you believe in everything they believe, they're using the same power, which is unfortunate because this cancel culture weapon that that swings back and forth is, is what's eliminating the opportunity for us to come together and compromise on what would be a reasonable uh, existence here in America. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it's, it's um, I don't like it either way. You know, I don't, I, I think it's, we need, we need people, if we're going to get out of the, what's going on and fix this country without a whole bunch of people getting killed, we need people to come together under some common sense guidelines and say, Hey, look, this is our country. We all share it. All right. The rules can't be your way. They can't be their way. We got to find some happy medium here that we can all live with and we can leave each other alone. You can live your way. You can live this way. Don't mess with the kids. You know, we need to establish some real baseline rules that are unacceptable. And, uh, you know, we move forward as a, as a unit. And, and, you know, just like business, we, you can't be successful in business um, with just, you know, one standard of ideas. You know what I'm saying? Like if I'm sitting in a room with a bunch of business people and there's a problem to be solved, and everybody thinks the same way and they all see the problem the same way. There can't really ever be a solution unless we're lucky enough to see it that way because there's a lack of different perspectives. You know, I'm, we're all seeing it from the exact same position. And that means that we can't think outside the box. So like it really handicaps our country in a way um, to solve problems and truly progress forward and become a powerhouse, which is the intent, by the way, they, they, the people in control of this, they understand this, uh, but we need to understand it as we, the people, we need to understand like, Hey man, we gotta, we gotta find, we gotta live common sense. We can't, we can't be over here, way over here on the right. We can't be way over here on the left. Yes. We have to have some structure and some ideals and some factual truth, uh, that we all agree upon, mm -hmm. you know, and one of those truths that I stand my heels in tight is gender, right? Like the reason I'm so outspoken on gender ideology is because it's absurd shit and it's not designed to be inclusive or to help people. It's actually designed to erode truth to the point where nothing exists in actual reality. It's all 
determined by someone's pers- perspective. Mm-hmm. And that's not, that's, you cannot operate a, a, a oper- you can't operate a business that way. You can't operate a life that way and you can't operate a country that way. Yeah. So we have to, you know, that's my take on all this. I love it, man. Let's get into our headlines, guys. Remember, if you want to see any of these pictures, articles, links, videos, go to andyforseller.com. You can find them linked there. Uh, with that being said, let's get right into headline number one. Headline number one reads, Donald Trump, Nikki Haley battle in New Hampshire primaries as the two top Republicans left. Um, so that's going on as we speak. Uh, by the time you guys are listening, it, Donald Trump won. I mean, it's, it's like it's going to be kind of hard to hard, hard to get to hard to pull. That I mean, up. look, man, I'm 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 not going to go out there and say that. Yeah, yeah I, we don't know what's going to happen, dude. Yeah, I mean, listen, the the way that I mean, like, I mean, yeah, I mean, we saw the same thing in 2020. I understand your point. Um, you know, I just like, but but there, the way everything is going, man. It, I mean, it's, I, it's, it's, I'm just saying, it's a little, yeah. it's, 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 we'll see, dude. I don't believe anything. I don't believe anything in terms of putting, taking things for granted. I feel like there's a lot of overconfidence with people right now. Um, especially with the non-Biden people that, you know, be, and, and by the way, yes, there is a shit ton of people, a shit ton who voted for Biden in 2020 who are now going to vote for Trump. And they, they come across all demographic platform, uh, demographic sections. Okay. I, I agree with that. I, there's no denying that, but I don't know what they're capable of doing in terms of fudging the numbers or I'm of the opinion. And I think a lot of people share this opinion that the 2020 election was tampered with uh, and potentially stolen. And I know there's people that disagree with me on that, but, and they say, well, that's, that's never been proven. And there's been all these cases that have come up. Yeah, man. But have we looked at what's going on in the legal system right now? Right? Like dude, people who are literally murdering people are being let out of jail the next day. Mm -hmm. Like the, the legal system cannot be trusted in terms of, what is actually happening, in my opinion? No, it can't. It can't, man. Um, yeah, so I mean, I, I guess we'll see. You know, I guess we'll see. Right now, the polls uh, average as of right now, as time of recording, Trump's at fifty three point nine percent. Nikki Haley's at thirty six point three. Um, apparently, there's a lot of uh, uh, there's a not a lot. There's like ten of them, but uh, of, of hardcore Biden voters um, in New Hampshire. Um, so, you know, the, the, the DNC primary is, was supposed to kick off in New Hampshire, but then they moved that uh, to South Carolina. Um, and that pissed off a lot of the New Hampshire voters um, expressing some content. One lady saying, uh, quote, I'm kind of angry about it, one voter said. And some people have said, why should we write his name in? And he won't even give us the time of day. Um, so he hasn't even he's not even trying to care about New Hampshire on the blue side. Um they continue. Another person said, uh, quote, we're disappointed this year not to have the Democratic primary. And that's why we're doing this, because it's not meaningless. Like the DNC says, another voter said it really is meaningful. Um, Nikki Haley did kick it off last night. Uh, she she got some votes uh, right at midnight in this little city called Dixville Notch. Um, a total of six people unanimously. That's all that's in the little town. Six people. And she got all six. So it's off to a great start. Um, that's actually what she said. A great start to a great day in New Hampshire, Nikki Haley said, uh, in response to the tally. Thank you, Dixville Notch. Um, and last little thing on the uh, the the updates that's going around. Apparently, there is this uh, there's a robo spam call going around of Biden. Did you see that? No. Yeah. So so this is from uh, NBC News. Fake Joe Biden robo call tells New Hampshire Democrats not to vote Tuesday. So. Uh, the New Hampshire uh, New Hampshire Attorney General's office says it is investigating what appears to be an unlawful attempt at voter suppression after NBC News reported on a robocall impersonating President Joe Biden that told recipients not to vote in Tuesday's presidential primary. Um, and it's pretty convincing. So so uh, they continue. Uh, the article continues, says, quote, Although the voice in the robocall sounds like the voice of President Biden, this message appears to be artificially generated based on initial indications, the attorney general's office said in a statement. Uh, Quote, these messages appear to be an unlawful attempt to disrupt the New Hampshire presidential primary election and to suppress New Hampshire voters. New Hampshire voters should disregard the content of this message entirely. Here's the here's the robocall. 
What a bunch of malarkey. We know the value of voting Democratic when our votes count. It's important that you save your vote for the November election. We'll need your help in electing Democrats up and down the ticket. Voting this Tuesday only enables the Republicans in their quest to elect Donald Trump again. Your vote makes a difference in November, not this Tuesday. If you would like to be removed from future calls, please press 2 now. Yeah, they actually found out that that actually was President Joe Biden calling people. They just forgot that he forgot. <laughs> I mean, you think he knows how to use a phone? Fuck no, man. That phone's not even on. He's not even on a call right now. Yeah. It's just a blank screen. Yeah. Well, that's what your phone looks like when you hold it to your ear, too. Is, that, is it? Yeah, it no. goes blank. It doesn't just show the shit. It doesn't? Let me see. You're not on a call. Call me. I'm not... <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> yeah, man. So we'll, we'll see. So, so <clears throat> that's not surprising with the robocall going. Yeah, I mean, look, yeah. dude, they're uh, <clears throat> they're using these AI things to like extort money from people now. Yeah. You know, it's it's very it's very weird um, that this technology is just. <sighs> but they're using that shit in the legal system now. I know, man. I know. It's we're entering a legit stage of reality where it's you know people can use ai to mimic people's voices and even video and we don't know what's real and what's not and dude that creates a level of paranoia and insanity that you know and mental health problems which is all i believe intentional well yeah because it's adding to that fog of truth like yeah it's adding to the fog of reality dude, like the it's, whole point is is lack of transparency total confusion and it adds to that yeah like when you don't know what the to trust yeah and it's only gonna get worse yeah, man. bro the internet has really f***ed up humanity dude like it really has it really has yeah yeah man guys jumping on this conversation down in the comments it's not i don't care what anybody says it's not worth the juice has not been worth the squeeze mm. we are in a situation now like i don't care how much money you made and dude i've i've done very well with the technology of the internet and i know a lot of you guys have as well none of that stuff's worth what what is happening now. The cost of humanity. Yeah, yeah, because it's creating total manipulation, total censorship, fake narratives, division. Now we're able to you know, manipulate and lie and accuse people of things that aren't even true with you know, AI and Photoshop and like, dude, it's just, it's gross, dude. Like the whole thing's gross. It's hard, it's, it's becoming harder and harder for me to really want to participate in that world. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I think very long and hard a, a lot of times about stopping, even just doing all of this stuff that I do and just walking away and turning my phone off and saying, F it. Yeah. you know what I mean? Like I, well, I, and the, here's the scariest part, bro. It's like, we have not even began to see the, the results of this. Like I mean, like the the true, like the the true results that that technology, this AI stuff, we won't even see that until another. Well, what's scary? Years, yeah, dude, and you know, people don't. What's scary is people are not connecting the dots, and nobody with the power to change it is even talking about these things. You know, people say, "Well, AI is so amazing, and AI is this great thing, and AI and AI and AI and it, blah 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 blah." Bro, AI is being pushed for a very specific reason that nobody's talking about. And that reason is to make the actual middle class worker obsolete and remove them from the workforce to create a dependent class so that they can introduce a universal basic income where people accept a certain amount of money a month to sit around and do nothing, contribute nothing, build nothing. And that sounds like utopia to a lot of people because a lot of people say, well, man, I'd love to not work. I'd love to not have a job. But would you love to be as dirt poor where you're standing in a bread line and you can only get government approved food and basically you have no options in your life and you have no freedom in your life and you have to take what you can get? Does that sound appealing to you? Because the picture they paint of what this universal basic income looks like is far different from reality. Mm -hmm. You know, they paint it to be like, we're going to redistribute the wealth, redistributing of wealth it make it doesn't make everyone wealthy. It makes everyone equally impoverished. Mm. And so we're not understanding that. And what's scary to me 
is that nobody's even talking about this. Like no senators are talking about this. No, enough, no huh? Congress people are talking about this. And these are people that can make rules and regulations around this technology and nobody's talking about it. And People are like, well, how's that? How's that going to create this communist? Well, what do you what do you mean, bro? They're putting economic pressure on businesses right now to adopt this technology, right? Like, look at look at what's going on with inflation. Look at cost of goods. Look at all the expenses it takes to run a business. You know, a lot of people think that businesses are price gouging. That's not what's happening. What's happening is the cost of operating the business is going so far up that businesses are being forced to adopt this technology that is not human capital. And that means human capital is going to have to go sit at home. All right. They're, so they're forcing the businesses to stay competitive by using the technology, which creates a situation where there's no there's no real jobs for people anymore. And the businesses that don't adopt it, like we try to resist it here. But the reality is, is that if you resist it wholly, you're going to go out of business right. at some point. So because of the economic pressures they put on the business. Right. If it was price, price gouging, it would just be a few businesses doing it. Dude, when everybody listen, is having people that it? say that... they. I understand why people could f believe that yeah, be just, because I believe there is companies that are doing that. Yeah. All right. There's always companies in hard economic situations that will take advantage and raise their prices. But I'm telling you right now, this is not one of those times. What's happening now is they are telling you that's what's happening to disguise the fact of what's really going on, which is forcing companies to adopt technology that takes away jobs from people and forces them into a universal basic income situation. That's what's actually happening now. And the companies that don't adopt will eventually be put out of business by companies that do. What, what do you, Amazon runs, I mean, we've got an Amazon center next to us, bro. They have drivers, but what ha they don't have people working in that in that building. It's robot. It's robots. Yeah, the parking lots are okay. Crazy. What what happens when Tesla, who has you know the you know I would say the greatest advantage from a technology standpoint, what happens to Tesla as a company when they start creating robots that can work twenty four hours a day and they have the ability to control the supply of the robots all right so like think about this you you create you create robots all right that's what you do mm -hmm. who are artificially intelligent ran and they can do the jobs of all these humans and you're the company that makes them all right do you sell those robots to the other companies or do you use the robots to put the other companies out of business and absorb all the business yourself yeah you do that no shit so that's why <laughs> tesla stock like if you're an investor tesla stock is probably like the main stock in my opinion because that's what elon's going to do i mean i the, i don't the i don't agree with with i don't dude it's just it's scary as and people aren't talking about it and they're not thinking about it and you know the the companies like amazon and and tesla they're going to end up owning everything like they're going to put every it's other fault yes yeah and here's the thing about Amazon too, bro, is like a lot of a lot of companies will go sell their products on Amazon, but then Amazon will just make a mere product and put you out of business. So they're legitimately like these people are running around voting for socialism and voting for the left while they're executing an irresponsible capitalism, which that whole movement is actually against. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. That's there's there's responsible, responsible there's a responsible ethical. ethical capitalism. You know, as a as a business owner, which I own a number of businesses, I take it as a personal responsibility to employ human beings in my community. And that's what we should all be doing. And human beings have to adjust their buying behavior to shop with companies that actually use human beings. Unless they want to be completely replaced and they say, well, you know, that's not going to replace me. I work construction, bro. You're, you're not paying attention. Bro, that's 3D printed they're, houses. They're 3D printing houses right yeah. now. Yeah. Like these, you, if you're a carpenter in five years, they're going to have robots that can make beautiful hand carved staircases from a thousand years ago in the time that you, in one day, mm -hmm. like you, these, we're not understanding what's happening. And it's very dangerous and no one's talking about it. Yeah. Fuck, man. Guys, jump in on this conversation. Let us know what you guys think down <clears> in the <throat> comments. Speaking of comments, let's go cruise some. Cool.
This comment uh this com- comes from <laughs> this comment comes from at Dustin Band dot video twenty eighty two. You ready? I drive truck. Everyone everywhere is getting sick. I think the vaccinated are shitting on us pure bloods. I mean <laughs> <laughs> I mean Dustin, bro. You ain't wrong. <laughs> it's a real thing. Dustin, bro, you should listen to what I just said the last 10 minutes, dude. In t- two more years, three more years, they ain't going to have truck drivers. Mm-hmm. They're going to have a truck driver and a robot unloader, unloader. And like, you know, the truck drivers that pull up and they're like, I'm not, it's not my job to touch that load. Your people got to do it. The robot's going to get out and do it. No problem. Yeah. Yep. And he's going to ride in the back. And the truck's gonna drive itself. Bro, didn't we watch that? What was iRobot? Yeah, but it's like, re- did listen, it teach us something? Listen, it's really gonna be that way. Yeah. Real soon. Um, and it, it makes me very concerned. Like, and the only way to stop it is if we, the American citizens, adjust our buying habits to reflect supporting companies that employ real people. Mm-hmm. And I say this over and over again, and people are like, oh, well, you know. Uh, you're just trying to promote your own. Yeah, you're right. I am promote my own company because I got all these people I'm responsible for, bro, and it matters to me. People. That's right. People, just like you. We should be shopping with companies that are using the minimal amount of technology to exist. That's the truth. And all these kids on the internet that are promoting AI, they are too ignorant to understand what they are actually doing. It's highly, highly, highly dangerous. And um, but as far as the vaccinated shedding. I don't know about all that, dude. Like, I, I, I don't know what's going on with that. I, I, I think, you know, we got a real bad flu. I can tell you that. Yeah, but, flu's back. But I can, yeah, no shit. <laughs> um, I don't know about the vaccine shedding, and I've, I've heard about that, and we've talked about it before. But I can tell you this. Uh, the, the all-cause death data is very shocking when you take a really good look at it. And people like to deny it and pretend like it's not existing, but... We have a major problem that's getting covered up. And there's a lot of doctors, just like during COVID, that are saying, uh, you know, hey, look at this, look at this, look at this. And it's being completely ignored. Nobody's talking about yeah, it. Yeah. Well, nobody, everybody still, they were abused so hard, they're afraid to talk about it. Yeah. You know, and I, I talked to somebody the other day, and they, and they said, well, we're just ready to move on from COVID. Bro, what are you talking about? The COVID's actually created all the problems that we're dealing with right now. The exact quote I was told was, the economy's too bad. We, we need to quit talking about COVID and start talking about the economy. Well, the economy is bad because of what they did with COVID. Mm-hmm. Like, the reason that your you're shit is up, you're just not connecting all the dots. Yeah. So, it's, I don't know, Dustin, but, you know, I think all of us need to take it seriously to start shopping with people who employ real people. Going out of our way to inconvenience ourselves to shop with people who employ real people and stop supporting these brands on convenience. You know, stop supporting these brands because they get you the product the same day. Be a little bit inconvenient. Shop, you know. Go pick it up. Yeah, dude. Otherwise, we're going to lose, bro. Yeah. I mean, dude, I'm going to tell you this. Like, companies aren't going, like, it's going to be dictated by consumer behavior. You know, there's going to be a lot of consumer behavior that's going to say, you know, well, I'm only shopping with these companies, right? But unless enough people do it, companies are going to be forced to adopt this technology. That's what people don't understand. Because not enough people are Correct. Them. And there's no company on the planet that's going to ride this into the dirt and go out of business because they're that principled. That's yeah. not going to happen. No. Eventually, they're going to have to make moves. And, dude, unless we as Americans change our cultural standards about what we buy and who we shop with, there's a big problem, and that's that's the ultimate weapon that we have, mm. is being smart about where we put our dollars. Yeah, yeah. Well, guys, let's keep this cruise moving. Let's head over to headline number two. <laughs> headline number two reads, Supreme Court allows federal agents to cut razor wire Texas installed on U.S.-Mexico border. Got to talk about it. This is a uh, Breitbart article reading. Uh, A divided Supreme Court on Monday allowed Border Patrol agents to cut razor wire that Texas installed on the U.S.-Mexico border while a lawsuit over the wire continues. The justices, by a 5-4 vote, granted an emergency appeal from the Biden administration, which has been in an escalating standoff at the border with Texas and had objected to an appellate ruling in favor of the state. 
The concertina wire along roughly 30 miles of the Rio Grande near the border city of Eagle Pass is part of Texas Governor Greg Abbott's broader fight with the administration over immigration enforcement. Abbott also has authorized installing floating barriers in the Rio Grande near Eagle Pass and allowed troopers to arrest and jail thousands of migrants on trespassing charges. The administration also is challenging those actions in federal court. Federal appeal court uh, last month forced federal agents to stop cutting the concertina wire. Large numbers of migrants have crossed at Eagle Pass in recent months. Uh, in court papers, the administration said the wire impedes Border Patrol agents from reaching migrants as they cross the river and that that, uh, in any case, federal immigration law trumps Texas's own efforts to stem the flow of migrants into the country. Um, now, Texas officials have argued that federal agents cut the wire to help uh, groups crossing illegally through the river before taking them in for processing. Um, now, on the vote count, uh, you got Chief Justice John Roberts, Justices Amy Comey Barrett, Kataji Br uh, Brown Jackson, Elena Kagan, and Sonia Sotomayor sided with the administration. Uh, Justices Samuel Alito, Neil Gorsuch, Brett Kavanaugh, and Clarence Thomas voted with Texas. But not one of the justices provided any explanation for their vote. Uh, now, ACB, Amy Coney Barrett, a Trump judge, she was the deciding vote to flip on each side. Um, but it was shocking to even see. I mean, it, it makes no sense. <clears throat> it makes zero sense unless you think about it in certain ways where it makes perfect sense. Right. And I th like there's been a lot of talk. I've been seeing talks on social media, you know, that I mean, listen, is it is our country that corrupt? Does the con corruption run that deep that it's been able to reach our highest court in this country? And it's hard to say. Uh, well, look, man, I think it's pretty clear that top to bottom, we have an issue with our federal government not standing for the interest of the American people. And this is just the latest thing that shows that. Yeah. Um, it's disturbing that this went that way. And I don't understand. I don't understand why. They would vote this way. I can't understand. I like I normally. Even tell you why normally I try to like think like okay, well, why? What's the other side of the story? And I don't understand that. And right now, I believe I saw. I've been busy with like my real life, and also trying not to die um, because I was so sick. The Abbott said, "Well, f you right." Oh, he absolutely did. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, so just for a little context. Um, right now, the Biden administration, they have admitted, OK, that around six point two illegal migrants have entered the U.S. in six point two million, which uh, if if you look at that, that's actually like twelve point four. Yeah. Military okay. age males for the most part. OK, 100%. How, how many how many uh, do you know how many without looking it up? Do you know how many um, uh, soldiers are in the United States military? It's like. What, two, two, three million? Nope. One point four million. One point four. So, so there's three, three of them, three of them for every one of our active military. Three to one. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And they're putting all these people in the big cities. They're putting them in New York. They're putting them in Chicago. They're putting them in LA. They're putting them in San Francisco. They're putting them in Phoenix. They're putting them in all these places. Yeah. Across the country. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, it's. It's interesting. Now, 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 here is, I guess you could you could say the good news. Um, Greg Abbott, he is standing up. Yeah. Um, it's not over, says Texas governor following SCOTUS border razor wire order. So he tweeted this out. It is over. It is over. They've already allowed that many people here. Those people are already here. Yeah, and not to mention, listen, uh, we, I don't, listen, not to mention, Governor Abbott, you bust a lot of these people up into further into this country. All right, we can't forget Yeah, that. so let's not act like you're the hero here bro right you should have stopped this a long time ago let's, let's be very, very and really clear. honestly dude like real talk the the men of the united states of america should should have stopped this yeah well i mean you got the national guard down there it's a, it's a combined effort between texas national guard i believe some florida national guardsmen are also there down at the border um but but greg abbott tweeted this out this is not over texas's razor wire is an effective 
deterrent to the illegal crossings Biden encourages. I will continue to defend Texas's constitutional authority to secure the border and prevent the Biden admin from destroying our property. Um, and just before we started recording, there was a video that just got leaked. Um, the Texas National Guard are currently setting up razor wire in Eagle Pass to repel illegal crossers despite the Supreme Court's order to remove the wire. And almost a sense of like like sovereign state rights. Like they're just saying, hey, listen, you, we're doing what we do. Here's yeah. the clip. So they're right back at it, continuing to set it up. Great to see. Yeah, I mean, and here's the thing, like I said, when you when you look at it. Okay, they're saying 6.2. That's what they're willing to admit. It's way more than that, right? Um, and again, we don't know who these people are, right? Like this video has been circling. Listen, dude, I, I, I think I speak for most people's position on this, okay? Our country is made up of immigrants, all right? My family came here. Your family came here. And I know you're going to make a joke. I, I already know. Where'd they come from? No, I wouldn't. What's, what boat they come on? I don't know. You're going to say some sh- sh- I wouldn't even go there. You are too. <laughs> I already see on your face. <laughs> but we got to be serious about this, okay? We've all come here one way or another, mm-hmm. all right? None of us, for the most part, were born here unless you're a Native American. And, you know, I think they have a gripe, all right? Let's be <laughs> real. We'll get um, to them later. Yeah, I, I and, you. And, 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 you know... But outside of that, this is a nation of multicultural immigrants. And we've done okay. We've done really good. Um, But the reality of our nation right now is that all of those immigrants that came here before came here through a process. They came here with an understanding. They came here with an understanding that they were going to join our culture and build a great America. And they left their culture of where they came from, where they came from. And they come here and they work hard and they pursue the American dream and we work collectively regardless of race, culture, uh, you know, and differences of opinion to create the best possible land for ourselves and our families together. And, you know, when I think of America, I don't think of America as a, you know, people like to say, you know, oh, well, you're a colonizer or you're a this or you're a that or you're, bro, when you think of an American, what's an American look like? I don't think of any particular like look Mm -hmm. like America looks so many different ways. You know what I mean? So, and we've done great. Like we have created this country that's amazing. We've created this country that has produced so much success and, and, and wealth and, and freedom for real, as much as I bitch, Okay, we've done pretty good. This this has never existed anywhere. No, not with multiple religious cultures and and backgrounds. No, that's that's never religious. It, what yeah. usually happens is one group kills the other group, mm-hmm. right? Like where you came from, okay, which is Bosnia, all right, or where Syed came from, which is India. You know, it's like seven and seven. Huh? To, it's like seven. I'm trying to figure it out, but yeah. <laughs> well, the point is, is that we all left those places to come here in pursuit of something better. And I think people who are idealists look at these people and they say, well, this is the country. This may, what are you talking? And they say, Andy, you're saying exactly what, what this is about. And you're telling us we need to deport these people. Yes, we do. Because they didn't come here with our culture joining our mission or what our country is supposed to be about in mind. They came here to get free shit. And to, yes, pursue a dream, but not adopt the American culture. And these people aren't bringing their families. They're not, they're not coming with their wives and their daughters and their children. They're coming 
as military age males. And where do you think they plan on getting their women? Where do you think they plan on, what do you think they plan on doing here? Like these people are not coming here to escape something and bring their families, bro. There's a saying, you know, when men escape a war, they take their families. When men go to war, they leave their families behind. Yeah. All right. And we're dealing with, this is very dangerous what's happening. And a lot of people who are idealist mindset do not understand it. And furthermore, those of you who know better, shame on you for not speaking up because you knew this the whole time. But you let AOC shame you into thinking that you're a bigot or you're a racist or kids in cages, which wasn't even true. All right. And now you're dealing with it. I had a conversation with a guy I've known for a long time last night who has typically disagreed with everything I said. And he made a post in his social media that said, I am done with this woke bullshit. You guys are unpleasable. I've tried to be nice to you and you. And I messaged him. I said, it's about time, dude. Yeah. You know, and he, you all right over there? Yeah. And he's like, and I start explaining to him what's going on. And he's, he's like, bro, that sounds crazy. That sounds, that sounds a little bit boogeyman. You know, I don't know. And he was respectful and he's always been respectful. Um, and he's an idealist, which I can appreciate people who, who have good hearts and think the best of other people, but we have to face reality here, bro. And these people are coming to take your shit. They're not coming to with their families to kumbaya no bro they are coming to take your shit and the first opportunity they get they will do it and we can see this because this is happening in europe and it's been happening for a decade go ask the men and women of ireland what they think about this go ask the men and women of belgium and holland what they think about this or of germany or of france okay they will tell you very straight up this is a big problem and if they listen to what i'm saying if you played them clips of what i'm telling they would say that man is telling the truth you should listen to him okay but a lot of you guys are so up your own ass with what's going on in social media or the chiefs games or whatever's going on right that you don't you don't pay attention to what's happening dude and this is going to get very dangerous do you think people traveled f across the world and they're 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 not serious about what they came here to get you're not serious, dude. And let me ask you this. If things get hard and the power goes out and shit happens and we get some civil unrest, who's going to be more capable? Is it going to be third world people who have lived without comfort, without power in a lot of cases, who have had to like survive their whole lives, who are hardened people or soft Americans who give a fuck about football on Sundays? Who's going to win that? Okay. You're going to come home from work one day and these motherfuckers are going to be in your house. And you're not going to know what to do. And then you're going to call the cops and they're going to say, we can't do anything because of the law. And they're going to, and then you're, you're, you're out and they're in. Okay. And it could go a lot of different ways. It could go more different ways than that. It could go, they offer these people citizenship for joining their military, which is what they're doing in Germany right now. Okay. So they could arm and train these people. And then, you know, we decide to protest it and they turn these on us. That could happen. Okay. They could create George Floyd style riots over the summer, anti-deportation riots. And they could, these Democrats and these progressive communist people who are always leading, you know, the act blue campaigns, the same people behind the George Floyd destruction. These people are going to be, they could be saying, well, <clears throat> you know, we can't deport these people, blah, blah, blah. And get these people. And then you have, you have 10 million military age males rioting instead of a bunch of blue haired malnourished nerds with their trash can lids. Okay. Now you got a real problem and you say, Oh, well the military will stop it. No, they won't because they're on the other side. The military has shown that they are on the side of the corrupt government. Yeah. The police have also shown that they, you know, they're going to kind of follow orders, man. It's, it's my job. Okay. We, we, we are under a delusion if we think that the military is going to stand with the American people in a situation like that. Yeah. So we got a big problem here. Especially when they're already outnumbered three to one. <sighs> That's what I'm saying, dude. We got a big problem here, man. It's, bi it's a big problem. It's a yeah. big problem. And people are not taking it serious enough. They're not speaking out. They're not making demands. Men are not standing up. And guys, I've been telling you this for years and years and years and years and years. Okay? Like, I'm in Missouri, dude. Like these, think nobody comes to Missouri. That's one of the great things about Missouri. Nobody comes here. <laughs> all right. But wherever you, the f you are, I ain't coming to your neighborhood to save you, bro. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, you guys think, like, what do you guys think? I got some army here. I'm going to bring it to your neighborhood and we're going to do this. You got to do that in your own neighborhood. You got to organize with your own people. You got to create systems and, and networks and, you know, a plan with your own communities. And you're not doing it. You're just sitting there waiting for someone to do something and nobody's coming. I'm not coming. Trump's not coming. Nobody's coming. So what the f are you going to do? And then you make fun of me for having a f APC and a f MRAP and a bunch of guns and shit. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. A lot of people are not prepared, bro. No. And men are not prepared. They are, men are failing their obligation to protect this country. That's a fact. And I'm sorry to say that. And if that hurts your feelings and makes you sad and makes you mad at me. You hear what we're talking about. Well, sometimes truth hurts, bro. We got to look ourselves in the mirror and be like, man, are we really going to be the generation of American men that loses this country? Because right now, that's what it appears that's going to happen. Yeah. At least to me. Yeah. Guys, let's keep this cruise moving. We got a third and final headline. Headline number three. We got a W on the table, Andy. We do? Yeah, let's talk about it. Uh, speaking of cancel culture, um, headline number three reads, newly elected school board in Pennsylvania reclaims indigenous mascot, rejects cancel culture. This story is pretty awesome. It's pretty cool. Um, this is a Fox News that's, article. That is, that is, that's a big deal. It's a big deal. That's a big deal, dude. This should be happening everywhere. Big deal, man. Go ahead. I'm not going to yeah. interrupt. Uh, Maybe a little. This is a Fox News article reading. A Pennsylvania community reclaimed its local indigenous history and a school's popular tribesman mascot last week, just two months after five new school committee members won elections and ran on pro-Native American platforms. The Southern York County School District, or SYCSD, school board voted 7-2 on Thursday to allow Susquehannock High School to bring back its traditional Warriors logo. Quote, this vote was the Lexington and Concord moment in the effort to defeat cancel culture. Native American activist and historian uh, Andre Billadell uh, told Fox News Digital after lobbying on behalf of the traditional image that pays homage to the indigenous Susquehannock people. All seven votes in favor of the logo came from members who were elected since a previous board voted to remove the logo back in 2021. Quote, the SYCSD school board stands as a role model and blueprint for other communities fighting for their native names and imagery. The North Dakota-based Native American Guardians Association, or NAGA, said in a statement. After it presented its case last week at the board meeting, five of the newcomers were elected in November after the sudden removal of the popular image in 2021 in an effort to rewrite the region's Native American history, spurred community anger and action. Quote, this movement was about erasing Native American culture, and I wasn't about to stand for it. Jennifer uh, Henkel, a mother of three children and one of the new school board members, told Fox News Digital. Uh, she and the other four new school board members, including her husband, Nathan Henkel, have never before run for elected office. These are just community members who, again, saw a problem and go in to fix it. Um, their arrival, however, is apparently not welcomed by everybody in the community. Quote, they came into their new positions with bravado to push their personal agendas and not with humility to learn their jobs, wrote Deborah uh, Kal Kalina, a former member of the school board in a recent guest editorial that appeared in the York Daily Record. Quote, to put the mascot away is respect for the past, for the present, and for the future. Katie Eisenach, identified as a school alumna, mother, and Native American, also told the same local outlet after the vote last week. Um, Hinkle said that uh, Hinkle said she was moved to political action by the negative impact on the community of the COVID-19 lockdowns and school closures and by a cancel culture effort to rewrite local history to stir public sentiment against the warrior's image. Uh, the outrage instead fueled the community's effort to save its local history. Um, now, here's the thing. So that school board, they hired in this um, like a. Uh, like research company, right? To come in and do the history of the area and the school, right? Um, and, and listen to this, okay? Quote, current research findings demonstrate that there is no evidence that the Susquehannock Indians lived in or around the municipalities that comprise the Southern York County School District. 
the board's diversity committee wrote in a 2021 study. Yet, that diversity committee report appears to conflict with centuries of known local history. European explorers wrote about the Susquehannock people who lived along the Susquehanna River as early as 1608, while, histor- uh, while historians believe that they lived in the area centuries earlier. So they completely falsified and lied on this fucking report that they used to justify the removal of this mascot. Their own diversity committee, they lied about it. Like, the history is actually there. It's yeah. It's been there for centuries. Yeah. Um, so Susquehannock committee, uh, communities were located along the Susquehanna River, especially in Cumberland, Doplin, Lancaster, and York Counties reports the website of the Susquehanna National Heritage Area, citing several historical sources. The native peoples, the website also said, lived in large fortified towns, the largest of which may have had a population of nearly 3,000 people. Um, And, of course, the diversity report apparently relied heavily on information provided by the National Congress of American Indians, or NCAI, to stoke opposition to the Susquehannock Warriors mascot. The powerful D.C.-based lobbying group is supported by taxpayer dollars and by left-wing activist groups. So here's a picture of the five new members. There's the logo up on the school uh, school mascots coming back. And uh, they did it. Cool. I, I, think, <clears throat> I think that's a good common sense move. Yeah. You know, we've talked about this a number of times on the show. How does it make sense to remove Aunt Jemima from syrup as one of the only African-American or black American icons that has that type of brand equity? Yeah. Like, what the f*** are we talking about, bro? That's insulting. You know, like, we remove- and she was a real person. Yeah. Like, dude, that's, <laughs> like, it's these woke, woke, white, progressive people who are offended for everybody else- You need to mind your own business, bro, and let people speak for themselves. You know, the Washington Redskins changing to the commanders, that makes no sense. Let's let's take an honor, an honorable mascot that in Native American culture is renowned to be badass warrior, okay, from one of the most iconic NFL brands ever. Let's remove that and let's replace them with the commanders, the people who killed them (laughs) and say that it's for their honor and like dude that's bullshit okay and but but, like that it's kind of like i know dude it's insane (laughs) and we could say the same thing about the cleveland indians okay and the guardians and we could why is quaker oats still quaker oats yeah and but uncle ben can't be uncle ben right right, right. you know what i'm saying like what do we jemima yeah so so basically work for (laughs) dude this but see if you really break it down these people these people are the racists okay they are the people who are pretending to care about these people but then removing them from these iconic brand images that actually honor that culture and are part of American culture. Okay, we should be celebrating those things. We should be celebrating the Native American warriors. We should be celebrating them. We should be celebrating black Americans who, you know, are branded as part of cultural iconic brands. Like these, and but, but these white progressive liberals are removing these things from society under the guise that they are offensive when the only people that are really offended by that are them and they're white and they're f-ing liberal and they live in a mick mansion in the suburbs and they want to have something to talk about at brunch with their pinkies up and shit like they're doing something good when in reality bro they're just eliminating some of the only culture iconic uh brands that, that are most important in these communities like it's insane dude it's totally insane it's totally backwards and you know, we do need to go back. Like the like the Redskins should go back to the Redskins. The Indians should go back to the Indians. The the and we should be looking at those as like very Red positive Red moves for the cultures. You know what I'm saying? Like bring back Angel Mama. Huh? Bring back Angel yes. Mama. Yeah, bro. Why so 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 I mean, dude, that's it, man. Like we this is we need to put our foot down and say no more of this shit. Yeah. This, this is, is absurd a, shit. Massive W, man. Congratulations to you guys up there. Way to fight, man. Like yeah. this is what we talk about. Like these are regular people 
They've never even ran for anything. They never yeah. held any offense, yeah. bro. And look how look look that they can make change. Changes happen, man. Bro, how many high schools out here have done this? Have done some shit like that. Oh. Yeah. And dude, people I'm sure they had jobs and I'm sure I know. they had families to take care of. So I'm sure. hold on. Why do they do this? What do you mean? Why do they remove these these icons from these products? National identity, bro. Oh, okay. It's destroying that. All right. Well, people, most people don't get this. Most people don't understand that this is part of the demoralization process of America. If people can't find things, if cultures can't find things that they... Like, for example, they want the black community to believe that America is not for them. Mm-hmm. They want the black community to believe that America is evil towards them. They want the the American Indian community to believe that America is evil towards them. And that, you know, there's some arguments to be made about the history of those things, 100%. But moving forward, bro, those are like points of pride for those cultures in what in the American culture, mm-hmm. okay? So if you remove the points of pride, because really think about this, bro. You People are like, well, why do they leave Quaker Oats? Because they want you to believe that everybody else thinks that America is for only white Quaker people, mm-hmm. okay? And they want to remove black people from every product and remove Native Americans from every product and remove Indian uh, Indians from products or any sort of minority so that they can be convinced. Because that's all co- they're going to see. They can be convinced in culture that America has no place for them. You understand? And then, the bro, the, the what's up about it is that these will be the same people who try to yell at us and say that we're trying to burn books and delete history when they're doing it they're actually but, doing but it. dude people aren't paying attention or don't understand why it's happening they think it's just some crazy woke people and they are it's the useful idiots rallying the drums around this right but here's the thing it's not just because they want to. They are being pushed to do it, saying, oh, look how offensive that is. Yeah, these are not and, their ideas. No, but the people calling the play up at the top, the communists, all right, they are. They understand what's happening. They understand that if we turn the useful idiots, the drunk wine moms who have no concept of what's really going on, saying this is offensive and this is this, that they will remove these people particular items of identity for these cultures and then the communists at the top can convince the cultures that they don't have a place in america because look at there's no brands that represent you there's no there's no teams that represent you all the teams represent white people quaker oats blah 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 guardians commanders you see what i'm saying this is about painting the picture that america is not a place for these minorities under the guise that this is offensive to minorities it makes no sense it's a communist legit operation that's happening that people are not waking up to you know let's remove all the identity for all these groups and let's leave it only for the white people and then we'll convince them that america is evil it's crazy man crazy guys jump in on this conversation down in the comments let us know what you guys think uh that was our third and final headline with that being said let's get to our final segment of the show as always thumbs up or dumbest this is where we uh, bring a headline up. We talk about it. It'll get one of those two options. So with that being said, our uh, thumbs up or dumbest headline is, you remember you said a couple of weeks ago, you, or maybe a week ago, you were like, guys, will do anything for pussy. Mm-hmm. We'll conquer countries. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just keep that in mind. Headline reads, boyfriend busted for dressing in drag to take career exam for girlfriend. <laughs> well, at least he's not shaking his dick in front of kids. <laughs> it's loud, boy. <laughs> yeah, what uh, was he taking the ACT? Uh, thought copying someone else's test answers was extreme. A 26-year-old man named Andres Singh has been arrested after allegedly masquerading as his girlfriend so he could take an exam in her stead, uh, as seen in photos blowing up online. Quote, he tried to enter the examination hall by changing his appearance, police spokesperson Manur Kamur, uh, Kamar told Jam Press of the Soulmate Cosplay. Uh, Singh has, uh, had been attempting to take a recruitment test for his girlfriend, uh, Par- Paramijit uh, Kaur, who's 34, at the DAV public school in uh, Kota Porta, Punjab, earlier this month, the Indian Express reported. Uh, Kuar had reportedly uh, previously failed the exam, a prerequisite to becoming a healthcare worker. 
To deceive test officials, the undercover lover shaved his facial hair, applied makeup, and got gussied up in women's clothes before entering the exam room. The meticulous impersonator even went so far as to forge his girlfriend's voter card, ID card, and Andahar card, a 12-digit unique identify, uh, identity number to make the illusion ironclad. These photos depicted the human chameleon allegedly dis uh, disguised as his other half at the Baba Farid University of Health Sciences in Punjab. Unfortunately, Singh failed the sex exam. Uh, exam officials reportedly grew suspicious after noticing that his face didn't match the picture of Kuar on the application form, according to the Ferdicott Police Superintendent Harjit Singh, his uncle. Authorities... Subsequently, ran Singh's biometrics and discovered that they didn't match the ones kept on record. Uh, records Kumar reported. Uh, so he got arrested um, <laughs> for his uh, bizarre cheating tactic. Um, police also accused Kumar, the girlfriend, of conspiring with her boyfriend, as they believe he wouldn't have been able to enact the deception without her consent and possible assistance. All right, now um, let's show the girlfriend first. Okay, so this is a picture of the girlfriend. And boyfriend. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Go back. <laughs> Come on, dude. <laughs> Bro, that's pretty funny. Bro, hey, listen. That's the ID card. That that's him. <laughs> oh, man. Bro, one day this guy's going to be like like an older dude and he's going to be like, like they're going to be sitting around telling stories and shit and he, they're going to be like, well, what's your craziest story? <laughs> oh, listen here, you'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> bro, that's so weird. That was him sitting in class, bro. Yeah, that's not going to cut it, bro. <sighs> Wait till she what... dumps him. Uh, yeah, she's going to dump him because he failed the exam. Bro. Yeah, well. <laughs> Study a little harder, man. Yeah, I mean, listen, that just goes to show we will literally do anything. Yeah, yeah. For some, never mind. Yeah, for some, for some curry. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm just saying, she probably has some good curry. Awesome, some buddy, buddy. <laughs> this, we can't do the jokes if if Zeeshan's out, bro. Yeah, no, man. It's not. Well, no, nah. like, listen, he's gonna. I'm sure he'll, he'll watch this. No, we need Zeeshan here if we're gonna make jokes. He probably knows this guy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is thumbs down, bro. Yeah, dumbest. Yeah. All right. Sorry, man. <laughs> Very rare that we just we're, we we drink the haterade here on the show, but that's pretty bad. Yeah, uh, you could have did better. Make it more convincing yeah. next time. Cut it off. All right, <laughs> guys, Andy. That's all I got. All right, guys. Hey, don't forget. Don't be a hoe. Share the show.